Okay, so I'm going to show you Microsoft Forms. It's part of Office 365 down here. And what we're going to do, we're going to create a simple survey so you can see how it flows. I'm going to go in and respond to the survey. And then I'm going to show you how you look at the responses. So you just start right here with a new form and just go at it. So we're ready to go. So let's call it a customer satisfaction survey. If you want to brand it, you can put a picture here and pull your picture up. Right now I'm going to act like we're a hamburger shop. And it says these images are part of Creative Commons, so I think I'm good using one of them. Let's pick this one and do Add. So we're good with this for a title. So let's add the first question. So you can see there's four different types of questions that they offer. We're going to do one of each one so you can see what they are. And we'll start with the first one. That's a list of options. Let's just do, was it good? It's suggesting options here. So it's being a little bit smart. Yes, no, maybe. I actually like all those. So let's just do add all. You can do other, which lets the user select uh, the fourth radio box and then type in what they think. I'm going to leave that off for now. You can allow multiple answers, which doesn't really make sense with this format. So we'll leave it the way it is for that. But I do want them to answer this. So let's make it required. I just clicked on that to toggle it to yes. You can shuffle the responses. If you feel like people are selecting the one that's just first in line, you can make it random to get a bit better of sample. I'm not going to do that right now. I just clicked and then it, that question's done. Let's add another question. This time we'll do text, which gives you an empty text box. Tell the user what we're looking for with the text box. We'll say, what could we do better? And that's is where they're going to type their answer. So you're not doing anything in there. You're going to let them put in a long answer if they want. We're going to leave this required because we want them to answer it. But you could also put some restrictions on it. They could have uh, you know, where they could only answer in a number show you these or it'd be greater than less than I don't really know why you'd want to do that in this case so let's not do that we'll go and uncheck that and this question's ready to go let's add another one we'll do the third option now which is a rating and we'll say how was your overall experience you can do it stars or you can do it numbers well, let's just do it stars. That's easier, right? Let's do a best out of five. I don't know who would do it out of ten, but let's leave it at five. And this one's not required. I don't know. And you could also label what each star means or give it a subtitle. We'll leave it the way it is. And now the fourth option is the date. And this is really simple. It's just a question, and then the user's going to input a, a certain date. So we'll say, uh, when was your visit? We can track if it's getting better as time goes on. There's only a subtitle option here, so you can require it or not require it. I want them to answer this one, so we'll require that. And that's the four basic types of questions. So at this point, you don't have any responses yet, so we won't go there, but we're going to preview it and we'll just go in and answer it ourselves one time and then look at the results. So we'll say, yeah, it was good. What could we do better? We'll say, and we're going to be really positive here. Nothing. It was great. Thanks. All right. Scroll down your overall experience. If you said that, hopefully you're going to say it's five stars. And the visit was just the other day. It was on the 21st of February. You click submit, but before I do that, I'll just show you the mobile version. Just a little preview of what it would look like. Here it is, same basic thing, just smaller. And let's submit it. It thanks you for doing it. Ask if you want to submit another response. You'll be able to tell the same person did it if you want to filter out duplicate responses. And that's done. So we went in and we answered it. Now you can look at the responses. There's only one at this point, but you can still see what it's going to do here.
It's going to give you a pie chart of the multiple choice. It'll t list all the responses for you from the text boxes and the ratings. And the visit says null for whatever reason, but you have to go into more details and then you can see the date. So you can analyze these pretty quickly. If you have a lot of them and this dashboard isn't doing it for you, you can open it in Excel. And when you do that, it just downloads a file. Why it doesn't put it in Excel online, I don't know. I think that would be cool if they did it because if you're Office 365, you have Excel right here. So it could still open it in the browser, but it wants to download a file. And when you open it up, it just opens it up on your old school desktop version of Excel. But this is handy. You can analyze it really well in here. So it tells you basically everything it knows about how I just filled out that survey. When I started, when I stopped, what my email is. So this is my username and my responses. So that is creating it, responding to it and analyzing it. But there are a few different ways where, where you can share it. I'll show you those. You can copy a link. So then you would put that link in, a, in an email or on your website. You could text it to someone. A QR code, so this is interesting. It gives you an image that's a scannable image. You could download that, print it out, and just put it on a cork board in your restaurant and say, scan this QR code to fill out our survey. You could grab this code to embed it on your website. You have to be able to edit the HTML. when You highlight this and put it on there. And that's actually going to give the users a little window where they see the survey on your site. It's not a link. It's uh, it's a frame looking at the survey. Or you can email it. You probably want to do it so anyone with the link can respond. Or you can limit it to just your organization. And when you click this email button, it's going to launch your email manager. It's probably going to be Outlook. Again, why it doesn't just do Outlook in the browser. That's available over here because we're using Office 365. I don't know. But that's what it does. And those are your sharing options. You can also give other people the ability to edit it if you want, and you can treat it like a template and give someone a duplicate. So I hope that was helpful. If you want to see more little tutorials like this, you can subscribe to my channel in the lower right hand corner. Thanks.